Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. And, and next we have uh, Thomas um, from Key Factor. He's the co-founder of Prime Key and he's chief PKI officer at Key Factor. And even though he doesn't look old enough, he's been implementing PKI <laughs> since 1994. Uh, he was the founder and developer of the open source PKI project EJBCA, contributor to numerous open source projects, sits as a member of the board on Open Source Sweden. And of course, like everybody here, he's helping the world prepare for post-quantum. <laughs> so over to Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. So one of, yeah, we're now going to move from, thank you for this very interesting talk, Ethan. We're going to move into applied cryptography. So one of the funny things I think uh, about when I hear a cryptographically relevant quantum computer is that it's, according to my sources, pronounced crack. I think that's funny. Anyhow, what we're going to talk about, yeah, is... Uh, some numbers, so some uh, performance measurements that we've done now in the practical world. Now, we're now with that, we know that it's impossible, it's not going to happen. We'll still see how, how much are we going to suffer you know, in our PKI when, when we start playing with this. I'm just going to grab my, see what time it is. Okay. And uh, to start with, so this is kind of a classic uh, slide. So it doesn't show down there. So that's why I'm, I'm looking back to see that I have the right thing. Uh, a classic slide showing the uh, signature size for different algorithms. I mean, it's uh, uh, for VeriSign. It's, it's OK, but I don't think it's kind of not so easy to digest and compare. So I made some uh, other things. And first, I think we have to talk about that we want to compare apples with apples instead of apples with pears, etc. And this is another, uh, you know, NIST invention. A great uh, we talk about NIST all the time. That's because they do so much great work. So we're used to uh, talking about you know bit sizes, RSA twenty forty eight bit or EC two fifty six. But with the new algorithms, uh, there's we don't talk about, or there is no such thing as a dilithium uh, two. You know how many bits is that? I don't uh, think it doesn't compute very well. So there's uh, instead of security strengths in FIPS 800-57, uh, which I'm sure you uh, know everything about. But uh, which yeah, we actually saw these security levels before, but also this uh, security strength to the to the left. We talk about uh, bits, which is kind of uh, security strength 128 bit is uh, AES 128, and it also then uh, translates to RSA 3072 or EC 256 or a range there. So when we compare different algorithms, or when I compare different algorithms, I wanted to use the different uh, security levels so we compare, you know, algorithms of comparable strength. So that's why we see that RSA 2048 is actually, in, on this scale, it's only 112-bit security, while uh, actually Dilithium 2 uh, is 128, which compares them to RSA 3072 or uh, uh, ECP 256. And the same thing with Dilithium 3, then is a security strength 192 bits, and Dilithium 5, 256 bits. And we have the same thing for uh, Sphinx Plus, and you can do the same things for, for LMS. Uh, but in this, so I've run some numbers or some performance testing with the different algorithms and actually focusing on what I could run on both software and on hardware security modules. So that's uh, what I'm going to move into, where, which I think is interesting. So first, I divided then kind of the measurements or the comparison of the different algorithms also in the security strength. So we can see, you know, how, of course, the lithium-2 compares to the 
the comparable security strength RSA 3072. And there we see that the public key sizes, of course, with the lithium, they are uh, a lot bigger. You know, if you're used to uh, public keys with P256, which is only like uh, 32 uh, bytes, then if we talk about the lithium 2, we have comparable strength, and it's, uh, I think it's uh, 1384 bytes uh, public key size. So this, I mean, of course, on my laptop, it doesn't really matter. I have a terabyte hard drive, so I can stuff as many Dilithium 5 keys as P521 keys in there. But when you talk to hardware vendors, for example, that store trust anchors or root certificates or only public keys as trust anchors in their hardware, they actually they start getting a little bit concerned when they think, OK, well, now I have you know, a bunch of uh, RSA keys uh, stored on my device, and I have limited storage space uh, and uh, I'm definitely not going to be able to fit as many dilithium 5 public keys in this device as I'm as I'm used to so they start to calculate you know things about you know how they're gonna maybe do their architecture or how they should structure that PKI how many trust anchors they can afford to have in their devices or I don't know maybe uh, planning about scaling uh, their next generation hardware as well and uh, of course, we work with PKI, so certificate sizes are super funny for us. That's that's what we thrive on. So certificate sizes we see as well. Of course, a, a certificate using P two fifty six is is very small. That's kind of the de facto standards for at least uh, for IoT today, even for a lot of TLS connections and and things like that. So it's really small. Uh, doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth or disk space for that matter. But it's uh, a lot uh, bigger for the, the new algorithms, especially we saw earlier as well that you, they re in some instances recommend to use the uh, highest security level, that's the Lithium 5, for example, or Sphinx uh, 256, uh, Sphinx Plus. So compared to uh, P521, which is, yeah, I don't know exactly how big my test certificate was, but a couple of you know, 200 bytes or something like that. Uh, a Dilithium 5 certificate is something like uh, seven, eight kilobytes large. So it's, of course, uh, if you're talking about uh, as well, that's probably why they say, you know, if you're running on a local air network as well, you won't notice super much difference about for TLS connections when it comes to latency and such. Uh, to establish a connection, but if you have a high latency connection, uh, these things uh, might matter a lot. Uh, and as well, of course, for uh, that might, or it's probably a good reason why hash-based signature algorithms like Sphinx Plus might be good for uh, firmware signing, because if you have a you know a firmware of 100 megabytes, adding you know. A, 30k or even a certificate chain, say 100k in certificates to that uh, firmware, uh, signed firmware, doesn't really matter too much. But if you're establishing a TLS connection, uh, it's uh, gonna hurt you quite some, I think. Uh, and uh, yep, next one, private keys, of course. So we see uh, a lot of kind of different aspects in in all this. You can, it's interesting, as already noted, you know, in earlier presentations, as for example, the hash-based signature algorithms have really small uh, keys, both private and public keys. So from that aspect, it's really nice. But then the, the uh, signature sizes, as we saw, is really large. So in the end, you know, it kind of uh, takes out. While we see here for, you know, the lithium, which is the, the, yeah, the primary selection for the digital signature algorithm, uh, it has really, really good large private keys, which of course, when it comes to, I don't know, if you're using smart cards or HSMs for that matter, HSMs do have limited storage capability, which we have uh, encountered in, in practice. So if we're used to having, uh, you know, 3000 P256 keys in an HSM, maybe not going to be able to do so many when we move to, uh, to the lithium. So all these uh, different parameters is when you implement your solutions. That's also why we, where everyone says, you know, different algorithms are suitable for different uh, use cases and such because it's all these parameters: uh, public key sizes, private key sizes, which 
often ends up in uh, certificate sizes. It's gonna gonna matter. It's gonna be different in different ways. In some aspects, maybe it doesn't matter at all. For some other use cases, uh, one of these parameters is gonna uh, matter a lot. You can also pl uh, plot it out in a table, which I think is, uh, well, it's harder to digest. I like the bar graphs better, but uh, this is another way to, to look at it. So you know, we don't have to stare at that too much. So next phase, uh, speed. So we're also, everyone is worried, at least a lot of people when I have uh, been in uh, in meetings, you know, they ask, okay, how slow is it gonna be? Gonna be you know, we're gonna suffer, you know, approximately how fast things are going with RSA and uh, EC, but uh, not with, uh, with the new algorithms. So I ran some tests. And I ran both in software and I also tested hardware security modules, which I had access to. So I managed to get access to five different hardware security modules, which I tested and uh, actually I call it, uh, I got three, was actually was working. So this is with the round three version of uh, the lithium, which I, I did the tests on. Uh, we're actually three of the HSMs actually worked pretty good. I was using the Bouncy Castle uh, open source cryptographic APIs and actually this doing, doing signatures to the HSMs, verifying it with Bouncy Castle, it's interoperable, it works. So. While uh, two HSMs were actually still only implementing the uh, round through two versions of Dilithium, so it's you know expected to not work, and hence it didn't work. But I found this uh, very encouraging actually because it, uh, you know, it's Im dependent implementations, and it was pretty. It it just worked, or not just, but almost uh, just worked with a kind of a couple of uh, small tweaks here and there. So it's very encouraging for the future that we'll, we're going to be able to get things uh, working together. Uh, so speeds. So first, I started with certificate issuing, issuing certificates. With uh, you know, this is on a, what's on my laptop, which is a it's a decent one, uh, very good Intel CPU, lots of RAM, lots of uh, SSD uh, drives, uh, using software, Bouncy Castle again, open source software. Uh, so this is how many certificates I could issue per second using the different algorithms. So we see actually, I mean, it's close to actually P256 just goes up to 200 and the rest is not far behind. So this is, well, it's the same, you know, very few is going to uh, care or notice anything. So, but this was maybe, maybe I just didn't push the system hard enough. So I tried to uh, push it a little bit harder. So. Uh, more threads, more parallelism, actually more certificates per second. So this is kind of the, the uh, what I think is the real results, you could say. So here uh, we still see, you know, with the RSA 3072, which now was my, I used that as my base baseline for 128 bit security level. It's about 800 certificates per second that I could uh, get out of my laptop. P256, a little bit uh, faster, and then we go down. But still, you see the lithium here is, uh, I mean, it's still 700 certificates, certificates per second. And from my experience, it's, I know one or two actually who would care about this uh, speed difference, but otherwise, of course, they, you know, uh, it's uh, extremely rare for any organization to issue uh, 800 or 700 certificates per second, usually, you know, down here somewhere uh, below 100, even though there is, you know, a few exceptions uh, where where you you are interested in this uh, in these numbers, but anyhow. So the conclusion is that yeah, for 99.99% of uh, use cases or users, the the speed you won't notice any difference at all, right? In your PKI at least. Uh, that was the software. So we also want to test uh, hardware security modules. So how uh, does that measure up and what can we kind of draw conclusions about now and the future from this. Uh, so this, uh, these are the three HSMs that I tested. 
button and managed to test. So this one was a, uh, it's over the internet, over kind of a cloud HSM, you could say. So there's some latency here. Actually, this is a latency between Europe and the uh, United States over across the Atlantic fiber. Here we also with uh, using RSA 3072 as a baseline. Uh, actually, you know, the lithium uh, here are a lot slower. You could get almost like 45 signatures per second for RSA 3072, but you know, very almost. You know, you you would notice this in practice, right? When you're if you're using this. But uh, well, let's not give up hope yet. So we have uh, HSM2. So here's uh, it's very in, uh, different, which is then of course interesting. So it's a different implementation. It's slightly different hardware, uh, different software implementation inside the hardware, etc. So here we can see that uh, the lithium two is almost as fast as RSA uh, 3072. And then of course we have to bear in mind that you know HSM's vendors have typically optimized for RSA you know, for decades, right? While these are kind of new, just plug in a new software implementations using the uh, trusty old uh, RSA optimized hardware. And uh, here it's uh, almost as fast. So from this, uh, you know, I would draw the conclusion that, yeah, you can, you know, with today's HSM hardware, with as software implementations becomes better and more optimized, it's going to be on par, you know, relatively comparable to what we used to for uh, RSA and uh, ECDSA, uh, which is very encouraging. It goes down a little bit when in the lithium five, but we would probably, I mean, we would expect uh, things to improve there as well. And uh, especially, uh, oh yeah, this is maybe one interesting thing or worth to consider is, of course, this is also a uh, cloud-based HSM with latency. So, of course, uh, one would wonder if perhaps the performance difference between RSA and Dilithium here is because the Dilithium signature is a lot bigger and I actually send the same data to be signed, but what I get back from the HSM is, has a lot more bytes. So, it might take a little bit, you know, some milliseconds longer to transfer the bigger signatures across the Atlantic. So, maybe, I, don't know, I mean, that would uh, not surprisingly be uh, one part of the equation and which makes it kind of important to think about uh, HSM and uh, especially cloud-based HSM implementations of the uh, the new algorithms, how they can be optimized to, to uh, not have to uh, perhaps uh, send gigabytes of data to be signed <laughs> across the Atlantic to a cloud-based HSM. Uh, with the lithium, uh, etc. Because, uh, for example, uh, in many cases, you uh, with RSA and EC, you just send a hash to be signed and get back. You don't send the whole data, uh, which uh, these are things uh, that kind of... I'm uh, hoping to see more uh, information or uh, see more about as, as the new algorithms get deployed. Uh, the final HSM as well. So this now is uh, more of a... Uh, actually a local software simulator-based install. Uh, here, of course, it's also interesting because here uh, actually P256 is way faster than anything else, which is probably uh, because it uses software which actually uh, has specific assembly instructions to utilize Intel hardware acceleration for certain uh, operations which are used for EC. So, you know, if the same thing can be applied to the lithium in the future, uh, then, you know, we can expect pretty good results, I think. So, and uh, here actually the lithium is faster than RSA. So we see that for different uh, implementations, we get a lot of different results, but probably in practice and, you know, as things get um, uh, more mature, uh, I think my conclusion at least is, uh, I will come to conclusion la last slide. Uh, I also did just to make one more algorithm, key generation, because that's kind of the, the last thing. So for testing, uh, exactly. So I have here only for uh, stateful hash based signature algorithms, 
uh, for key, gen key generation. And that is only because the key generation for the lattice-based algorithms were yeah, just like we're used to, it's fast. So also neither key generation with the uh, dilithium or lattice-based algorithms will, we will not m notice any, or we will not have any noticeable difference for you know, all 99.99% .99 of use cases. That's good as well. Uh, so the final interesting note around also key generation on LMS, uh, which uh, we've spoken a little bit uh, before here. There's you know there's also ranging from fast, when but then you can only do 32 signatures if you're using an LMS SHA-256 M32H5, you know which is good for 32 signatures that key generates really fast. Uh, but if you want to be able to do millions of signatures, then key generation is uh, really, really slow, especially if you, uh, I guess the conclusion is that we don't expect to see a lot of H25 LMS keys in, uh, in practice. Uh, key generation is uh, unbearably slow. Well, of course, you can do it. You can wait for a couple of hours if you really need to, but I guess the uh, there are different architectures for HSS that are envisioned for to be able to do many signatures with stateful hash pair signature algorithms. And we're getting closer to uh, the conclusion. So we kind of what does this mean to me from a PKI perspective? So I think uh, it means from a PKI perspective that we need to consider at least uh, growing data sizes. So there are, you know, for many use cases, you know, I've only issued a couple of hundred thousand certificates. Uh, uh, you, uh, it's okay, you don't care too much. But in, there are also many uh, use cases that have issued millions or hundreds of millions or even billions of certificates. For those use cases, if you're issuing really large volumes of certificates, your database architecture will need to scale up, which, I mean, if you're issuing billions of certificates, and need to keep all of them in a database, then you're already, you know, kind of working a lot with your database infrastructure because you have terabytes of data. But if you had to have to quadruple that, it might uh, give you a challenge. And the same things uh, with things like if you sign all transactions and if you sign uh, logs, like every sign every log record and store it somewhere, this is going to be a lot more data to store. So storage volumes will definitely uh, increase a lot as for scalable or high scale use cases. Uh, the second one is, of course, that uh, as I talked about, optimizations will surely come. So, uh, for uh, I'm not concerned about the perf uh, really performance of the uh, of these new algorithms. So I'm feeling pretty good. And all right, it's even so. Of course, there are open questions, constrained devices that we talked about, hardware and software optimizations, cloud HSM efficiency is uh, one concern that I have. And uh, there was always an open question, like uh, when you started talking about this, this months ago, which algorithms will be widely used? We know that answer, we can strike that question. But of course, it's more about the uh, bigger e IT ecosystem. But this comes in, you know, more other discussions uh, about the uh, cryptographic migration. One thing is, I think, PKI, hardware security modules, the kind of front line. We're going to be quick out the door when the uh, final standards are out there. You know, it's going to be implemented fast and we're going to see uh, certificates and hardware security modules and uh, hybrid certificates and everything like that pretty, pretty fast. But then it also has to be put into use in, you know, be it uh, TLS or firmware signing and uh, uh, you name it. Uh, and, oh yeah, exactly. When I wrote this the first time, we had a case where we actually still saw an MD5 popped up as a surprise. Like, oh, crap, someone is still using MD5. So it's, uh, it will be uh, fun and interesting uh, to see how uh, this cryptographic migration goes. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, fantastic presentation. It's the audience's turn for questions. So hopefully we have, yes. Thank you. 
Um, I've just got one question. Um, the statistics, the numbers were great. The last sentence you showed of MD5 is basically what I want to address. Um, these speeds were not measured for OT systems, for embedded systems, and those are the ones that have got the speed problems, they've got the space problems, the big key sizes, and I think that's where most of the industries I know of are really interested in the numbers. Correct. Yeah, that's what I've uh, talked about, especially about the key sizes, you know, for when there's more constrained devices, but definitely as well, the, of course, uh, signing and verification speeds in these types of devices will also be uh, quite interesting. I mean, especially if it's memory constrained. So now, of course, the twelve tested on hardware security modules, but these are, of course, the the bigger hardware secured modules and not the uh, the uh, say smart card chips, etc. So that's that will be a good topic for a uh, another performance presentation. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Going back to the private key sizes. Oh, okay, here we are. Sorry. <laughs> um, a, a, a quick question. Uh, the, the, was a, uh, the public key sizes also increase, and of course, uh, the dashing is also used. Do you know a percentage? Uh, I presume this is all using Shake, uh, the SHA 3. Um, uh, for signing, uh, do you know a percentage uh, of, of the signing time uh, that was for sh uh, for the hashing part uh, of the certificate? Uh, that was a good question. No, I don't. Didn't. Uh, I mean, that would be possible to, especially for a software based. You could easily easily measure that by profiling, but uh, this was uh, not done here. I would expect it to be quite small. I mean, similar left for ECDSA, right? Or I mean, the hashing percentage for classic algorithms is uh, tiny compared to the signature operations. Of course, with the new algorithms, it's more embedded. So uh, interesting. Uh, okay. it's, it's great that you're checking this out. I think that's fantastic. Um, to the private key sizes, as you say, key generation is very fast for post-quantum algorithms. Have you considered storing the seed, which is only like 32 bytes, instead of storing the private key and then just regenerate on demand? Uh, no. That uh, would be interesting. Uh, maybe that would be a good question to take for... Uh, yeah, I mean, for maybe the uh, hardware vendors, uh, especially I, that would probably be interesting for things like constrained devices. So, but then we have to uh, rerun that with the uh, the vendors of this type of devices to see if if it's interesting, you know, or if it's computational or feasible. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, time up. So, big thanks to Thomas. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.